you know, we've talked about autonomous drone mm-hmm. uh, inspections, right? We've talked mm-hmm. about the concept of, uh, of these drones being able to operate on their own. I'm assuming that the current state of the art is not like that, right? Is it, what's the current state of the art, right? And how are autonomous drones or your drones better? Right. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great question. So traditionally, and I'm not sure how healthy people will be to hear this because we mm-hmm. fly a lot, but um, traditionally. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> say, say it, man. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, it's, <laughs> what goes down in MROs sometimes, and you'd be surprised, um, it's a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's really manual. We can say that. So it's, mm. it's a lot. Traditionally, it's like inspectors that are getting up on the, on a scissor lift or a boom, boom lift. Um, you know, they're, essentially attaching themselves to the, the ceiling of a, of, a, of a hangar to walk across the crown that's the top of the aircraft to look yeah. for these damages. And we're also up there using like pen and paper to mark down damages Yikes. that they find. Yeah, you'd think it'd be much more of a, you know, a, a higher tech process, but it really isn't. Um, uh. And a lot of times when these inspections are happening, um, they, humans, inspectors accidentally cause more damage to a plane because they can run those scissor lifts or boom lifts into the side of them, um, which happens more than you think, uh, believe it or not. So our system, mm-hmm. our platform, re, I mean, com- reduces the overall need for that. The only thing that our drone, our drone is not like going up there and fixing any of the damages, mm-hmm. right? So we're just, we're just an inspection tool. We're an extension of the, the, the technician that's performing that inspection. But uh, with that being said, the, the drone, I mean, even with the drone were to fall, we have, have like a two meter operating distance. We're getting down to a meter and a half and soon enough to, to a meter, um, getting us a stand up distance from that aircraft. But even if it were to fall, that drone like wet is about, you know, 12 pounds, I'd mm-hmm. say. Well, yeah, about 12 pounds. And so it's not going to cause the same damage as if you run a <laughs> boom lift into the side of a plane. Yeah. Um, luckily, we've never had that ever happened the drones never crashed which is great um we want to keep it that way mm-hmm. um but we we have a more um modern and digital approach into how we're performing these inspections um which is now being really recognized by like the the, the large players and by the regulatory body authorities being like the faa yasa uh, and, and so on that's good <laughs> wow uh I was just going to mention that if your drones are carrying out visual inspections and, you know, mapping out the environment, comparing it to where it's supposed to be, but humans still have to go in there to fix any issues, is there, are there any plans in the future or anyone working on the idea of actually using robots to go fix these things instead of humans? Yeah, not me, um, but yeah. <laughs> um, me? This is one hard enough problem to tackle on its own. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, there's other companies out, especially that are out here that I've met before that have created like different tools or different robotic solutions that are repairing some of the damage, some like specific types of damages yeah. on airframes, which I see they've been, you know, getting some great traction. So like for, for me, for what I would be interested in is more of like a relational uh, partnership, like maybe partnership between the two companies. So mm-hmm. it's like we kind of can come in as a, like a, as a deal to whatever client or customers like is looking at um, implementing these solutions into their their maintenance operations or programs, yeah. But yeah, there's some. Just need to say there, there are some out there. Yeah, there are companies working on this. You know, as, as I was asking that question just now, I just, <laughs> I, you know, we've we've been doing we've been running this podcast for a few a few months now, and I've been getting a lot of feedback about some of the technologies we talk about, and anything that involves a robot replacing a human, it just, you know, draws mm-hmm. out like huge visceral like reactions from people right Mm -hmm. and then i'm asking this question about replacing highly paid because aircraft tech you know people tend to be well paid right Mm -hmm. replacing highly paid people with with robots and you know it just struck me that this is gonna create so i will will, i'll I'll stop you right there because that's that's i mean that that is definitely a big thing that has has come but like yeah just like anything with ai i mean look like look at chat gbt a lot of things that or jobs that it's automating so there's, there's definitely a fine line on these systems that are coming into the workforce. Yeah. And the unique or what's actually has like even unions that are excited about like my platform and other platforms that are like this 
Um, it's the fact that it's it's an augmentation tool, mm-hmm. more as an, like an extension to that qualified mechanic as opposed to something that's replacing it. Right? Yeah. So our computer, as we build our computer vision models, there's, I mean, that's, again, that's going to be a very, very long process before like the FAA will recognize, um, you know, identified damages and defects through just computer vision alone. There mm-hmm. has to, there has to be a human that reviews those images at the end of the day, mm-hmm. um, and signs off um, on the on the task card. Um, so our system is meant to augment, yeah, and is is shown to augment the the mechanic and make their life easier. Yeah, right. Like you're still getting paid the same amount, but now you have a system that's making your job a lot safer. You don't have any fault. There's no fall risk until you actually go up there and repair damage if it is found. Um, and it's a lot faster for process. So that payout is um, in dividends to the the airline or, or the, the carrier to get their aircraft back in service. Even if it's just a day or two sooner than traditionally, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of realized um, you know, capital uh, or revenue for them. I, I agree. I agree. I think it's... you know people can get upskilled and you know better work can get done and um, processes can become more efficient and like you said this is not going to replace anybody right Um, so that's true so for anyone listening (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'm getting used to the to the to the uh, to the feedback now and I'm like okay I get it Um, but I think uh, overall just like the internet didn't really replace anybody uh, it just made people more um, highly skilled, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, AI would basically be uh, a thing where you use AI to do better work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's that's what it should be instead of being yeah. scared of it. And yeah. I mean, and that's gonna be also being idealistic. I mean, there's also, you can see, you know, I think it was like Elon and, and Bill Gates coming out and saying that these are things that we should be aware of and we should watch for. But those, you know, there's, there's different things that, can be done, and I'm not going to make this into a political thing in any way, but like <laughs> legislatively or anything else that can be done to insulate people from the yeah. advancements uh, as they're going through this upscaling, um, upscaling, excuse me, and learning new things and learning how to operate in this in this post AI world. Yeah, 